It's a pleasure and delight to be here. Thank you, Paul, again, and thank you, Eric, for having us. Um, so today, we're going to share uh, some of our uh, thoughts and a framework around how do you really get the power of predictive analytics, or for that matter, analytics, uh, from in the business, and how do you put that? And so you get that from by putting it in the context of business. If you align things in the business context, that's when you get the most power of analytics. So, um, if you want to uh, say something about us, uh, here's our tweet, hashtag data decisions uh, at Analytics We. Myself, Bianca, I'm the CEO of Airing. Uh, we are an analytics training company. My experience uh, in the last 10 years of doing analytics um, and uh, companies like PayPal and Adobe. Uh, and for me, 15 years of experience in analytics, um, in mostly driving impact through uh, analytics in the marketing of our organization. So without ado, this is what we are hoping to cover today. Uh, how do you approach solving a business problem? And given that you know uh, what you're working on, what is the, what is, how do you communicate that? And how do you, how do you, how are you relevant to senior leadership? They have an agenda, they have some priorities. How are you, how, how can you be more relevant to the leadership? And um, how do you, if you are in a position where are, you are heading up uh, an analytics organization, how do you set up that agenda in the most optimized manner? So this is what our intent is for today. So with that, um, by the way, uh, all of this um, would be available in the PowerPoint format to you guys, but also uh, it is available as white paper on our website, editing.com slash white paper HTML. So don't need to take notes, let's interact, have fun, so uh, we can get the most out of that. And so by the way, just stop us anywhere, any, anything is not making sense, uh, let us interact with it. So it's not a workshop, but let's, uh, let's get the most out of it. Let's, let's get so the three pillars of analytics approach is our uh, is our recipe for how you make analytics impactful in the business. So the first one is measurement framework. What do we mean by measurement framework? How am I doing? The first question when you're looking at it, you're a business owner, you're a department owner, you're an individual contributor. How am I doing? Right? So how and how do you define how am I doing? And based on how you're doing, how, what you define as your uh, you know, the metrics, success metrics, how can predictive analytics help you get there? <coughs> Second is portfolio analysis. What are my business drivers? What do I fundamentally understand about my business that once I understand the levers of my business, I can say, here's where I want to focus because this is a problem area. Here's a great opportunity for me. Let me focus here. So as a result of identifying first, how am I doing? And the second layer, what drive how, how, how am I doing? You start uh, getting to the details of how you can start drawing impact through analytics. And the third one is customer analysis. Customer is the center, whether you're B2B or B2C, it's the center of your universe. What, is, what are my customers' need? What are they saying? What is their wish list? Do I understand them? Can I, is there, do they have custom needs? Is there a way I can articulate my message in a different way for different customer sets? Some, some of them are more sophisticated, some are just beginning with our product, whatever that product is, right? So, so customer analysis is the third, third pillar. So there are three pillars of analytics approach. Framework, measurement framework, portfolio analysis, and customer analysis. And the way you would go about doing it is, is, is somewhat iterative, right? If you start at the highest level, of your of your business, a twenty thousand foot view, right? How am I doing? You get to the drivers, but these are all. Think about it as a pyramid. You, at the top of the pyramid, you're in, you're discovering all these three aspects, and then once you've understood some aspects of your customer, you'll go back to the measurement framework. So it kind of goes back and go, you know, kind of goes down the pyramid if you can get the visuals from twenty thousand twenty thousand foot view to all the way percolates down to whatever you are working on uh, at at the detail level. As, as you get incremental understanding of your, of your business. So with that, measurement framework. So let's say in our daily life, you know, we were, uh, we were going from, we are based out of San Francisco, so you can see the bias here. Uh, let's say we were going from San Francisco to LA, right? And uh, this is like a small, is it a PD? 
um, small car. But let's say we all were going in there, and I say, hey guys, come on, we're going. So what is your question? We ask them asking who, where, where are you going? Oh, you yeah, just tell him. Huh? All right, so we all get in the car, and we are driving. And then I, then we ask you know, ourselves, okay, how would I know if I've succeeded in this, right? What are, what is, if my goal is to go from San Francisco to LA, how would I know, how would I measure myself that I've made it, right? Is it the color of the car, mileage, the horsepower, engine horsepower? What is relevant here? Any thoughts? Can you be? That you reached LA. Your goal is to reach LA. You've reached LA. Now let's say my goal is to go from San Francisco to LA in the most cost effective manner. What is the relevant metric here? Is it the color of the car? Does it matter? The color of the car? Is it yellow or red? Well, you may get part of the cost, but you know, okay. Maybe that's a good thing. What is it? What, you know, if it if if my again, so goal goal the goal back to the smart goal, if you are familiar with that, getting it more specific, you go from San Francisco to LA in the most cost effective manner. What would be the relevant relevant metric? Shortest number of miles. Mileage. Mileage and short number of miles. So San Francisco to LA, let's say the miles are fixed, right? Let's say we don't, we have one way. But if the miles are not fixed, okay, what is the shortest route I can take? And what's the mileage? Um, least traffic. Least traffic. Right? Uh, gas it consumes. My Yeah. Yeah. So all these things. I'm sorry, what? Uh, say price of flights. <laughs> what? Some out of Boston career. Look at the car here. No. Great point. So the point is, depending on where what your goal is, your metrics will change. And that's what we're talking about. So in in our daily life, how how we measure success in our in our business life. Uh, the you have you kind of have to align your metrics, the success metrics, to the goals and priorities. If it is the fastest way, then the you know the uh, how good is my mileage doesn't matter. But if it's the cheapest way, mileage is relevant, right? So depending on what my goal is, the relevant the metrics would be you know you you would define different metrics. And it's not like one metric is worse versus you know. It's just that it's aligned to a different goal. Right, um, and uh, the other thing that I wanted to add was um, our financials in our business, for example. Our financials the only way to measure success. No, what, what do you think? Some others, uh, some others are. <laughs> no, I mean some not particularly, but you know, customer loyalty, customer loyalty, comfort. So these are these are aspects which I'm hearing is more sounding like customer metrics, right? So there are lots of ways to think of the success. It's just not one way. As long as you're keeping it clear and making your goals and priorities very specific, very you know, smart goals and priorities, and making sure how whatever how, how are you are measuring is aligning to that. I've seen in my life and and in ten years of doing analytics and before lots and lots of dashboards, irrelevant dashboards. You're measuring that. You don't drive your business with that. Nobody looks at it. They're created, they stand, you know, they're, they're in the mark somewhere, right? So, and the reason why it happens is because, you know, somebody designs the dashboard and somebody is running the business, not necessarily having a conversation and figuring out, you know, here is where I'm going, how do I measure what is relevant. So, this is a bit of an idea, this is just to kind of show and uh, kind of give you an idea of, you can do top-down financials. One way of doing uh, measurement framework is you, you start with saying, what is the most relevant? So this is a live example uh, from a business unit where Sunit was part of North America marketing. And the park marketing uh, head said, margin is what I'm going for. So if margin is what you're going for, then you kind of, you know, my party gave this on the right side equation, revenue minus cost minus loss of my margin. What is my revenue a function of? Revenue is a function of merchant and how, how much my merchant, uh, how good and how, uh, what is the engagement, of, uh, you know, what is the average volume or average revenue per merchant and so on. So you can start seeing that you can, in financial, top down financial is one of the very easy and good way of saying, how does how does my metric, my top thing which I, I'm interested in, percolates all the way down 
And let's say my department where I was sitting was cross-border. If I was charged with leading cross-border, then I know exactly, and then, and then by the way, this, this will percolate and this will translate into some equation where you start understanding if transaction margin is what I'm going for, if I increase my cross-border from 30% to 40%, 30% to 31%, 1% increase in cross-border would mean incremental X percent in margin. So you, you start with this effort and then you percolate it down to your numbers. And then if I'm leading cross-border, I understand what am I going for, right? Uh, Top-down financials is one way. The other way is uh, balance scorecard. How many guys are familiar with balance scorecard? Okay, quite a few. So balance scorecard in the most fundamental way is a way of balancing the financials with the customer in view. Financials is like uh, almost inside out view, how good am I doing? And uh, customer in view is how good uh, the customers think I'm doing. In some ways, whatever, it's loyalty, satisfaction, how well I am. So, and again, it's an eye chart, it's a, band, it's a chart model from Balance Scorecard Institute. But for a, for a credit card company, you know, you have financials, and then you have customer in view, whether it's improved brand image and increased market share. And then you have your internal process and your uh, HR learning, basically lined up to what what you're going for, what is important for your business, right? So uh, this this is available, uh, this will be available, so don't, not necessarily write it, but the, uh, the idea is here, if, if you know, if you are going for them, um, understanding your, you know, overall balance scorecard percolated to the organization, if, you, if you're going for improving marketing, then what you can do is, you can go to the initiative level and say, my initiative is improving marketing. Right? And you can do it, you can improve marketing by end way, right? You can do better targeting. I don't need to market to a million customers. I'll go for the top 30%. And you, and you can define your top either way is using simple logic, analytics, business analytics, predictive analytics, whatever have you. You can segment. I'm going to make my, my customers' experience better. So I'm going to customize my offering to the different segments. Uh, you can also do, you know, a thousand people land on my website, but hundred of them convert at 10% conversion. If I make that 100 to 120, without driving more traffic, I've optimized, I've driven more, more, uh, more uh, the numerator basically, and I've improved my market, right? So if improving marketing was your initiative, to different things, what is the metric here? Pipeline. Pipeline is the metric? Marketing. Marketing pipeline, how would you measure if, if, if I was looking for one metric, ROI, right? Because it's talking about uh, somehow optimizing optimizing that, that marketing effort. And so the marketing effort is you can actually, I mean, if you look at the, if you were to draw up for any organization the revenue by marketing dollars, right? And you know, it's, it'll go like a linear curve, and, but at some point, it starts curving out, flattening, or I don't know what happens. But you know, it's, it is almost a linear function initially. But uh, but what you're going for is a revenue uh, optimized re revenue at the optimized investment, right? So ROI. So if ROI was your initiative level uh, metric, what you're going for, then you can kind of translate. Okay, I'm going for increasing my revenue, decreasing my investment. My revenue is a function of number. Let's say this is an acquisition. I'm I'm sitting in part of the acquisition. Revenue is a function of number of people I acquire, multiplied by the revenue per acquisition, and acquisition is a function of blah, 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 right? So whatever, wherever you're at, you can do measurement frameworks of this kind, where either you do you know, top-down financials, initiative-level financials, or balance scorecard, or, or some other ways. Ultimately, they fall in these kind of broad three buckets. Does that, does that make sense so far? So we figured out how, how am I doing. I, we figured out one, one aspect. And uh, yeah, so uh, let us share an example of how we took a situation which was totally dysfunctional in the measurement space and made it uh, up, up to a place where it had like, a huge impact in the organization. So I was working in a financial services company, I uh, joined the collections group a long time back, and the first <coughs> initiative I was tasked with was uh, senior management don't have.